John is back for another video, this one being on the engine behind me. So, engine's out in, in the workshop. We've already got rid of all the incendiaries, exhaust manifolds, um, injection pump and that sort of stuff. While stripping the incendiaries and stuff off the engine, we made two shock discoveries. One being that it has its original engine from new. Checking the data plate on the cab, it is still got its original engine, which I thought would have been long gone in military service. The second one being the engine is cracked in several places. So, Josh has got the pieces, so Josh passes all the pieces. So, this in here was two pieces. It's also cracked in between the heads here. Yeah. Hang on it. Also got a crack here. Again, just to sit on the heads. And this bit looks in good condition. And then my glamorous resistant here. It's also cracked and pulled it off. And unfortunately, it's cracked down here, down here, down here, down here, down here, down here, not there. So that's a bonus. As you can imagine, we weren't best pleased to start finding cracks in the engine. I have got a spare engine we could throw in, but that'd be boring, and we don't do boring. Uh, the fact that she is numbers matching kind of makes us want to repair and get this engine back together again. So we'll probably pull it apart, assess the rest of it, and uh, cold stitch it and show you repairing a cast iron engine block, which is certainly more interesting than just chucking a new engine in. You heard me talk in the previous video that she has the worst engine oil in it I've ever seen in an engine. It is just grey, gloopy, not ideal. And we're a bit worried that that's going to have an impact in the rest of the engine. With once all oil sat on rocker arms and comrods, pistons and crank, that's also going to, the moisture in there is going to have rusted and pitted that. But you'll know as we find out as we start pulling it apart. We've pre took the bolts out of the rocker covers. So, in theory, I could tap and she's loose. Yes. See the moisture in the oil's got and some rusting on the rocker rams. Here, yeah, if I can get it to focus. Yeah, that's to be expected, but less than ideal. If we loosen the gasket on that one. Let's start stripping the engine out and assessing damage and repairs needed as we sort of go down and end up at the crankshaft. So our first job being to remove the rocker shaft. As you see, they, as you've seen, they are slightly rusty. The important thing when undoing rocker shafts, although a shaft this size doesn't matter too much, but undo them equally to let the pressure off the springs. Slagging these all off. Without dropping the ratchet. Half a turn at a time.
So that's all off. The shaft's all oiled, so you can see how the oil comes up the pedestals. We call these cam pedestals up along the shaft. There's a small oil hole just behind the balls and at the end where it oils the valve gear. You can see how the moisture is sat. The end of the push rod has a hole that locates in. You can see how the moisture is sat in there and rusted up the end of the balls on the rocker arms. That is a hell of a push rod. It's like as long as my arm. Cool. Okay, this one is rusty and fluffy. There is some sort of nest in this engine. There is a nest down here. Time to lift the heads off. I made some brackets that go through the uh, rocker shaft pedestals. Josh is now putting a stop on, but is Mostly frozen. They're not. They, they, they're for going around corners. Yeah. They lift around corners. These ones. <laughs> we towed a fire truck yesterday, and they got left out overnight. Fuzzy. Oh, she's bad. She's bad. Oh, you didn't touch the head gasket. Well, that'll do. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. <laughs> 
Oh yes! That head gasket was gone. So, we thought we'd find out, do we actually have a nest in the engine? I've saved the awkward box last. Does Stuart Little live in our engine? One, always the last bolt. Last bolt's always awkward. Stuart has been living in our engine. He's got good taste, it's a Rolls Royce. Yes, we have a Rolls Royce flavoured mouse. <laughs> Uh, I'm assuming he long lives there. We're going to have to serve him a 48 day nutrition notice. I think he's gone. Mousy has gone. He could have ended up in the bottom though when you pulled the uh, push rods out. Mousy's drowned in the oil. <laughs> <laughs> no. Engine. As you can see, or as you saw, both cylinder heads are now removed. It's not free. It's just... This one is equally... Have a screwdriver. I want to see where end in that. This is some sort of... It's a bit pasty. All the best engines have white goo inside. That adds at least 100 horsepower. This one's similar. This one's more crumbly. Same with this one. This one has its own little paddling bond. This is like a five star hotel for a mouse, isn't it? He's got swimming pools. Luxury space mud packs, bath. mud baths. Sure, we look after him. More. Again, a paddling pond. However, I mean, this one's pretty damn good. Bit of condensation damage, but. Nah, it's got a big score up the side. Oh, yeah, actually. So you see the one good one has a really deep score. So that gives eight out of eight cylinders knackered. Seized on seven. Yeah, seized on seven, but the eighth is also gone. If I was a betting man, I wouldn't have betted that we're gonna have eight knackered cylinders. Yeah, that about sums it up. That about sums it up. So we'll crack on now. We're going to have to get the front timing case off, the bell housing off, strip it down, then we can lift it up, drop the oil out of it, drop the sum off it, lay them to its side, and start knocking liners out. Start, yeah, knocking liners out. That they're going to be stuck to pistons. Fingers crossed. Wish us luck. Cross your fingers and hope that this, these liners and pistons come out nicely. I tell you now, the pistons won't. No. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... We're just rolling our eyes. Let's make a start. Down the bottom edge here. Right, side, Josh. Okay, it needs to be quite straight. Oh, she's good. Yeah. Yep. We've now got the front timing case off of this engine, and there's a lot of gears and first glimpses of um, the state of the oil as well that's now on the floor. And the first thing we noticed was um, this, this here. 
um, on our on the gear on the crank. That's a definitely a broken tooth. And he has a matching broken tooth on this idler, which is currently in here. You can just about see that there. So that will come off. And you can see there's half a half a tooth missing there. And it'll come in. No, he's got that stuck. <laughs> broken tooth. So what's going on in here? So end of the crankshaft, so this is all the drive comes from here. Uh, this one over here is attached to the injection pump and uh, there was a shaft coming out there, probably saw that. Um, supercharger drive is off up here, camshaft is bolted to the back of this one and the important thing is is this one and that one have twice as many gear teeth as that one because obviously four-stroke engine uh, so only set squeeze bang blow camshaft rotates half the speed of the crank same with the injection pump um, this one just being an idler he can be whatever size well fills the gap up really and um, supercharger is all geared down so that spins really quickly to blow all the air in um, so yeah we'll uh, carry on pulling this apart I'm going to top Josh just from the bottom I'm going to go with like five roll pins Right, here comes the supercharger housing. I might need a hammer this. Is heavy? I'm, I'm thinking those gears are going to try and run away. Okay. Oh, I found the goo. That gear's running away. Will you pull out? No. Nope. Yep. There's your flex drive. Oh. I'm, I'm, it's going to make a mess either way round. Yeah. So our supercharger is soft coupled. No, he's not. No, he's got a fancy bearing. There, there he is. There. Yeah, just a bit there that takes up the shock. Let's go add him with the. Wow. So our next job really is to lift it up, drain the sump and drop that oil out of it that is making a mess all over my workshop floor. I couldn't take the engine oil out any sooner though because uh, our trusty forklift wouldn't lift the engine. We had to get some weight off it. And the Middleton is stuck over there needing some work and you'll see that on the channel next week. Right, we're going to have a cup of coffee. We just stopped for a cup of coffee and Josh is generally stirring his coffee with my 10 mil spanner. Well, if you stirred it properly with a spoon, I wouldn't have to. The 10 mil spanner? Engine is now hanging off the forklift as we... Uh, Are we ready? Pulling the uh, sump plug out. Ready? Yeah. Ooh. That's that's antifreeze. Oh. oh. <laughs> There's a lump in there. All right, so our next job is to drop the first bit of the sump off. We've, as you saw from the video, the oil is awful and it isn't draining out the drain hole particularly well. So there's still quite a lot of oil in it. Off. Yep. Oh, there we go. I don't think it's ever been off before. The engine is now upside down. Uh, that was a bit of a, a bit of a faff. But it's been done and now we can well really see that it is just full of grey goo is the only way to describe it. So both oil pickups are fairly 
blocked. Um, rust on the crank, which is never ideal. Some in there, there, you can maybe see them, they're a bit worse than others. Um, there's a big old camshaft hidden in the darkness down there. So, well, our next job is to clean these up, lift the whole oil rail out um, with the pump, and then we can start undoing big bolts and pulling things out. So we're about to put or take off the rear engine main seal, which is what seals the oil coming out from around the crankshaft, which is held on by this plate here. Our next bolts, we want that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Extra locking tabs to knock off. It is loose. So that's the rear engine main seal off, I thought I'd give you a quick explanation of how they work. We call it the rear engine main seal because it obviously seals the oil coming out the sump and up the crankshaft out into the clutch housing. But it's not a seal as most people would expect. There's no rubber, there's no o-rings or something like that. You have a thread that screws in the opposite direction to which the crankshaft turns. And that goes in a tightly fitted housing. That comes to the housing that splits in half so you can get it off the crankshaft. So running quite a tight tolerance to this machine face here is the thread. So any oil that does get up there, the screw thread sort of gets in the screw thread and it just flings it straight back into the engine again. Which I thought was might be an interesting point to point out. Our next job is get rid of the main seal now. Now we've got all the oil pipes off the, off the main business end. Looking at the mains, we call these the, the main bearings. They're the bearings that the crankshaft runs on. And then we have big ends, which is the big end bearing on a conrod. The smaller end is the gudgeon bin, goes through the piston. We'll show you that in a bit. The next job is to undo the mains. We've undone several of them. We've got one left, which we left for the camera. Now oh, an interesting point to point out is the size of the nut on the intermediate bearings on the crank in between the, you've got the end, you've got middle and front, they all have twin nuts so they're four bearings going vertically but they also run horizontal bolts so they're cross bolted too. You can see it, see the size of the nut difference. Josh is going to get ready to undo the last main bearing here. Ready to go, we're undoing them. So they are pretty tight, so they are three quarter socket, three torque tension, and then brake bar, and then pole all the way to Josh. So, Josh, if you undo that one. Fuck, Jesus Christ. Look at the camera does it justice. You are like, that's, you, you're a good 15 feet away. Right, so we've got this last main to undo. Luckily, these end, these ones are small nuts aren't as tight. So I'm going to start on the upper side.
one now. There you go. We've got a few more to go, yeah? A few more. Right, we know. So how about that for a camshaft? That's on five ten for comparison. Yeah, Josh is five foot ten. That's it's not even long. It's just me and it's solid. So as you've seen, the crankshaft and camshaft are now out. Camshaft has got a bearing that is splintering apart. As you can see, is a that made that near on impossible to get out. The camshaft, that is. The bearing wanted to come out, that was a problem. Right, so rather than just tell you that the bearings are knackered, let's show you why. So that's a lead, lead coating on the outside, and they're copper backed, which you can see. That, that big gouge through here shouldn't be here. That's debris that's gone through and scored around with the crank. And there's a matching crank that is matching mark on the crank that's just as deep. And this one is damaged in a different way. We've just rust. And that's just pitted and that is that's just like sandpaper. Oh, 
Right, this one's another, another main bearing. I mean, right, the gouging in this one and the scores is. And obviously, as you can see, it's worn most of its lead coating off, and it's just that back down to the copper, the copper backing. Got another bad one to. Uh, same sort of story with with this one. Well, I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but you should. There is, you can see the speckles of dirt that's still trapped in the shell. Well, that's just been poor oil quality and debris floating around from the engine slowly chewing itself up. So, yeah, that is not what we wanted when stripping this apart. Originally, when we planned the project, it was the engine was coming out for a spruce up with a paint and a Top and tail on the service. Top and tail, I mean, sort of rocket covers off, sump off, and inspection. Make sure she's in good health. Didn't plan or expect to have to strip the engine out, yet alone it being cracked. The crank's heavily scored. There's not, I haven't found, we have, there's, we took, well, we haven't taken one thing off his engine and gone, well, that's all right, because. Everything, everything. Next engine video, we'll pull the pistons out, pull the liners out, and uh, start block repairing. If you enjoyed it, hit the old thumbs up. Didn't enjoy it, let us know why, and help us improve. We're working on lighting, more lighting, and we're working on some different cameras to improve the quality, and microphones. People wanted some more nut and bolt work. Is this what you wanted? Let us know. We, we do listen. But, right, join us in the next video.